Well, the, the church here had um, kind of a difficult um, balance to strike in that um, it needed to be uh, certainly accessible to um, the people coming here in, in an appropriate scale for them, but it's also very visible from the highway, and it's in an area where there are a number of large churches that are even closer to the road, and so um, the, the building strikes um, uh, uh, an interesting pose and, and serves almost as kind of a, a billboard for the church. It has a very graphic front uh, and a very simple figure that I think people identify as a church. Obviously with the, the cross that's in the steeple, it's, it's obvious that it's a church, but it's, um, it doesn't inherently try to look like um, uh, an antique cathedral. The original building that we, we had on site um, was a 40 foot by 60 foot shop building. Uh, the long axis of which ran north-south, which is contrary to the east-west orientation um, needed for the Orthodox Church. And so we had a discussion of whether or not we would simply use the building as is uh, for the sanctuary space and then um, go through a, a process with the church of reorienting um, the worship space. But we really didn't want to do that. We really wanted to, um, we wanted to dignify and, and acknowledge the, the, the rituals and programmatic requirements of the church itself. We went ahead and, and essentially split the building in half, the existing building, giving half of it to the sanctuary and half of it to a fellowship hall that's adjacent to it, and took a, the, the narthex, um, which is the circulatory space that normally leads to the sanctuary, essentially folded it um, so that it doesn't project further to the, uh, further to the west, but folded it along the north-south line and to help create the, the new elevation. Um, facing the highway. We used a material that we've used on, on another project, um, which is this box ribbed metal that has sort of a, a, a pinstriped effect. And so even though it's kind of an industrial material, um, it has a, we think it has an integrity to it and can be done finely um, such that people don't just immediately think, oh, it's another cheap metal building, um, which is in fact kind of what we started with and, and chose to skin a metal building in, in a new metal skin that is a lot more refined. We, we found this was a really good balance not only for, um, um, for to address sort of the, the form of the church that we aspired to, which was more abstract um, and, um, and more graphical, that the, the metal was a good choice and also fit in with with the local vernacular in a lot of ways, that um, there are industrial agricultural buildings and other things that, um, that have a, a kinship to a building like this that, um, that speaks to the economy of means and things of the people in the, in the Ozarks. Well, our church consists of people from about 10 different countries, and the Orthodox churches in different countries have their own unique architecture. And there was no way we could blend in all the different ways together to make it, we thought, look clean and nice. And, and so we looked at the Ozarks in Arkansas and uh, various indigenous architecture styles here. And when we contacted Marlon Blackwell, he had some ideas that everybody was enthused about. It was very important to us to have some sort of dome incorporated with the facility and one of the nice benefits of that is the sound and the acoustics bounce back very nice and so everyone can hear real clearly. It does what it was supposed to do and I think the inside of it is very very conducive to worship. It's very peaceful.